it's a new era in CFB to start off this year, put on full display. My take on this game is simple. I, I know some people will be upset about it. Good riddance to the Pac-12. Can you do it in terms of the week to week to week? I don't see a pathway for this team to miss the college football playoffs. We want to make sure you have those best bets in the entirety of our betting card. That was so the thinking! But he had that he program was already going there. there! Only on Sports Grid. Brew Crew has already clinched the National League Said They're two games behind L.A. That being the Dodgers trying to maybe get the second seed in the National League standings for October. Both of these teams have a chance to score some runs against these pitching matchups, so maybe another over, even though we do have a playoff atmosphere. And yes, Milwaukee did clinch, but there's still an eye on the prize of we might be able to chase right. down the Dodgers and also the Phillies to get one of those buys. The early line, only on Sports Grid. Brian Dable has been feeling it. He's in a foul mood. He's uh, having stare downs with Pat Leonard and everything else. John Mara wants Brian Dable to go and get the next quarterback. They tried to get the next quarterback. We all watched it on Hard Knocks. They couldn't end up with Daniels. They couldn't end up with May. So they said, okay, we'll run it back a year. We'll go get neighbors and we'll tolerate. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports. Good morning. Welcome to Newswire here on Sports Grid. I'm Craig Mish. Did you catch day one of Major League Baseball's postseason? It was wild. If you didn't, we're going to recap it all for you. Thanks for being part of our show today. We'll also give you the latest in the National Football League, the latest in television with Simon Applebaum of the podcast. Tomorrow will be televised. Give you all the very latest streaming news notes and information as well. Also a guest contributor, as always, from Legal Sports Report, Sam McQuillan in the house, as well as Sporting News, each and every day, 11 a.m. exclusively here on Sports Grid. Hey, we're going to start off with some baseball here on the show today. I guess we get to do this one more day before the football returns tomorrow night. But let's start off with the game in case you missed it. And if you're on the West Coast, maybe just waking up to it last night, the San Diego Padres with a dominant performance, specifically from their pitcher, to take a 1-0 lead in the best of three series in the wild card with the Atlanta Braves. Michael King, remember this name. If you don't, you may be missing out here because King dominated Atlanta yesterday, striking out 12 batters. He was one of the players that was involved in that Juan Soto deal a couple of years ago. You see Fernando Tatis Jr. also homered in that game as well. It was electric at Petco Park. They take a 1-0 series lead. Braves do not have Chris Sale. Braves are in some trouble in this series. It could be a quick one for them. Now, the big surprise of the day yesterday, or one of the bigger surprises, was the Detroit Tigers going to Houston and winning game one of their best of three series. A very close, low-scoring game. But essentially, when you have the very best pitcher in baseball pitching, you have a shot. And that is that player that you see right there. Tariq Skubal yesterday dominated Houston. Framber Valdez got in trouble early, and then the game just kind of slogged on. And finally, 3-1 was the final as the Tigers go to Houston and win. Now, keep in mind, Detroit has been using a lot of openers and not great pitchers, so to speak, the rest of the way, while Houston does have Hunter Brown back on the mound today. I'm going to tell you more about that coming up in just a minute. Detroit takes a 1-0 series lead. Scooble very impressed with his own performance yesterday. Yeah, I mean, that was a, I mean, a great environment. Um, obviously, the history with this team, seven straight ALCSs, I think that – you know, it speaks for itself, right? The guys that they got over there too, you know, a ton of talent. They handle left-handed pitching really well. So, you know, it was a good challenge. It was, it was fun. It was a ton of fun. I enjoyed it. Um, it's probably the most nervous I've been since my debut. So that was also fun to deal with, you know. But, um, yeah, what a game. It was fun. Glad to come out with a win. Yeah, love to hear that when a player says that he was nervous going into a game. I think that we can all relate. The uh, Orioles, meanwhile, by the way, are up against it after just one game at home. Corbin Burns did his job. The offense did not. Cole Reagans and the Kansas City Royals shut them down for a one to nothing win. Another game going under the total in the postseason in Major League Baseball. Six and a half, seven. Seems like all these games are going under. And now Kansas City takes a 1-0 series lead. Now keep in mind, all of the wild card games that are being played are all in one destination. So for Kansas City to win this series, they're going to have to win another one. And they're going to have to do it in Baltimore. I'll preview that game coming up in just a minute. 
Meanwhile, one of the games that got out of hand pretty early, New York Mets, Milwaukee Brewers. Yeah, Mets go on the road and beat Milwaukee, no problem. Uh, the Brewers, first team ever to lose four straight playoff games after leading by two runs in each. They led early. Mets came back and just didn't stop. Eight to four, the final in this one. And with all that was said about the Mets not being able to travel on the road after playing that doubleheader on Monday, certainly wasn't the case. Now, all of a sudden, Pat Murphy has his Milwaukee Brewers in a must-win situation today. It isn't about that. You know, he's he's probably 18 pitches, 18 pitches from where his, he kind of is limit. We take the lead in the game. We've got a full bullpen. It's a playoff game. You don't, you don't. Well, you know, we'd like to get him to five because of our bullpen usage over the week. You don't do that. You're playing to win tonight. And Piamps has got a 1.03 ERA in 30 games. Hasn't given up a run in 12 outings. You know, they. If Piamps gets into the top of the order again, or if uh, Peralta gets to the top of the order again, then it changes how we use the bullpen usage. Then Ashby has to come in for Nemo and get the ground ball like he did. Um, but Piams is out of the inning. You know what I mean? And we're, we're still, we're not even talking about this. That's a good outing for Freddie. He was very emotional. So those 70 pitches are a little different when it's that much emotion. It's a great way to break down what happened in the game yesterday. You're going to hear a lot of second-guessing the managers moving forward. Let's not second-guess what the games are underway today. It will begin 2.32 Eastern time. Tigers at Astros, Detroit with a 1-0 series lead. 4.38 Eastern, it is Seth Lugo pitching for the Royals. Zach Eflin for the Orioles, 4.38 Eastern. Mets at Brewers tonight, Manaya and Montas. And then the late game tonight, 8.30 Eastern, Braves at Padres, Max Freed against Joe Musgrove. Meanwhile, some breaking news in the world of NASCAR today, but coming from arguably the best player in the history of the National Basketball Association. Two teams in NASCAR, one owned by, yes, Michael Jordan, that Michael Jordan, has filed a federal antitrust lawsuit against the stock car series and chairman Jim France on Wednesday, claiming the new charter system limits competition by unfairly binding teams to their series tracks and suppliers huh antitrust involved here nascar in early september sent a final offer on what is essentially a revenue sharing model with most saying that they did so under duress or felt threatened to do so here is michael jordan's statement i have always been a fierce competitor and that will to win is what drives me in the entire 23 xi team each and every week out on the track Let's get to the latest in the National Football League. Devontae Adams is the subject of a lot of rumors right now in the NFL, and it appears is that he could have played his last game with the Las Vegas Raiders. Several teams being rumored, including the Chiefs and the Jets and some others as well. You may remember earlier in the week on social media, his head coach liked the post, which potentially signaled an exit for Adams, who said, on a show that he basically has not spoken to his coach since he did not play last week we could have a resolution as soon as tomorrow von miller of the buffalo bills has been suspended four games for violating the national football league's personal conduct policy this is stemming from an incident that happened last year where there were allegations on an assault on his pregnant girlfriend during the bye week for the bills the cleveland browns are not going to have Mike Hall Jr. on the field for the next five weeks. The league announced that they have suspended him for violating the league's personal conduct policy, stemming to a charge of disorderly conduct in a domestic altercation this past summer. Demarcus Lawrence of the Dallas Cowboys is going to go on the injured reserve list due to a Liz Frank injury. He will avoid surgery and could return at some point this season. Let's get to some good news here on the show in the NFL. We'll start with Nick Chubb. He's back at practice for the Cleveland Browns. They've struggled in a big way on the ground and through the air. Of course, Jerome Ford has been their key running back, but Chubb is going to be back, and it looks like he could play over the next couple of weeks. They've opened up a window for him to play. Jeffrey Simmons is also back for the Tennessee Titans. He missed the 31-12 win over the Dolphins, saying that he tore a ligament. They have a bye week coming up, and then you will see him back on the field, one of the best defensive players in the NFL. And also, Odell Beckham Jr., remember him? He's back for the Miami Dolphins and practicing. Could see some on-field time coming in the future. We will see. 
College football could potentially have a super league coming underway, which would be the end of this conference alignment. It's called the CSFL. It's a group of executives and administrators proposing streamlining college football with the top 72 programs that would compete in the Power 12 conference made up of 12 team, six divisions based on geography, not conference like SEC, Big Ten, or anything else. It would be the East, the Mideast, the Great Lakes, the Midwest, Carolinas, Mid-South, Southeast, South Plains, Texas, Southwest, and West. I know I ran through that fast. I'm sorry. Texas State is uh, right now in talks to potentially join the Mountain West Conference, but those talks have stalled. And so we'll see if Texas State joins a new one. But meanwhile, the good news for college football is that Saturday night's game between Alabama and Georgia averaged 12 million viewers on ABC and ESPN streaming platforms. It's the most watched college football game in prime time since 2017 between Alabama and Florida State. Very quickly in the WNBA, the Liberty are up 2-0 in their series with the Aces, and the Lynx have evened up their series with the Suns 1-1. We'll be right back after this. Don't go away. Anyone that's been to a sporting event, the atmosphere before a game, I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do, we can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the game start, so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing, and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal, and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. Your gut says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on Sports Grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. After a very promising start to this season, could it be already done for KC's wide receiver, Rasheed Rice, attempting to make a tackle after Patrick Mahomes threw an interception? We're used to teams saying, we don't know, MRI, MRI, MRI. Here, Andy Reid's being a little more honest. He's leaving hope alive. But I think they already know, which is really, really too bad. The early line, only on Sports Grid. Bring in Matt Litowski from Sporting News to recap some of Major League Baseball's postseason and then take a look ahead to today. Uh, Matt, I, I think that it's fair to say that these games are extremely tough to call. I mean, we can all have opinions on these, but the baseball postseason this year in particular, uh, very short odds, very low totals. I, I think things will be a little bit clearer when we get the Yankees involved, the Dodgers involved, Phillies involved, and they get some home games. They're going back and forth as well. But at least my take from watching day one is expect the unexpected. I think anything can happen over the next 48 hours. Yeah, that's what it feels like. We know that everyone's on a shorter leash. All the pitchers are on a shorter leash in the postseason. So what happens often during the regular season, you let a guy work through something. You let a guy, yeah, let's try to get another inning out of him. Doesn't happen in the postseason to the point that guys are often yanked too quickly or at least – we all say they're yanked too quickly after they do a bad job and 
we second guess the manager the next day. But it's very, very difficult to look at any of these four matchups right now and think, well, this team's the clear favorite or this team's for sure going to bounce back after after an opening opening series loss. I just think that going into these games, it's it's you, you let me put it this way. You can't take what the analysis we normally do for other sports. Well, their backs against the wall, they're going to bounce back or they're at home. So I like this team. It just doesn't seem to apply to baseball as well as it does to maybe some of the other sports. I mean, we see that all the time with how well road teams do in the wild card series. We see how well teams have closed out after winning the first game throughout history of this wild card series. We don't see a lot of game threes. I think we'll see one this year for the reason you mentioned that these are very, very close series, competitive teams, similarly skilled teams. But I also wouldn't be surprised one bit if we just saw four sweeps and we were on to the next round because it seems to be the nature of playoff baseball right now. Yeah, I, I hope not, Matt. I, I really hope that we, we – I know, and that's what happened last year too. But I, I do hope we get like half of these series going three games. I'm not sure that this is going to be one of them, the, the Padres and the Braves. Michael King dominated the Braves. The same problem Atlanta has had all season long – reared its head again yesterday and it's Matt honestly I, I'm not gonna indict the Braves I've talked about this previously on the show on anything I mean they have lost so many players their best player is not playing again in the postseason their best pitcher is not there and once every four or five games Matt the Braves are getting shut out it happened again yesterday Michael King shut them out my, my guess is they'll score some runs today the total is six and a half in the game they played today and you know certainly uh, you know, no Chris Sale even in this one, too. I, I mean, I don't know what there's left to say. I, you know, honestly, Brian Snicker could be one of the managers of the year uh, candidates this year, but I don't think they're beating San Diego in this series. Yeah, I'd be surprised. This was the one series going in where I thought, okay, you know, Padres are going to win this series. I felt pretty good about it. But, uh, you know, to me, the ray of hope going into this game for them is uh, the Padres were, you know, at least by some advanced stats, slightly statistically below average. Uh, against lefties, uh, which is why that sale injury was so is so huge. But I think that the you know the the Braves certainly they're like you said. I think they're going to get on the scoreboard. I think they're going to score some some runs. It's not going to be quite as dominant as it was yesterday for for Padres pitching. But uh, yeah, I think they're going to have a hard time. I just think this is the one situation where I look at it and say, well, this is the better team, and uh, you know this is where you know you look at playing at home. It, I don't think it hurts. I don't know how much it helps, but it doesn't hurt for the Padres. And uh, I, w- I would expect them to put this away. But at the same time, basically, like we said at the opening, I- I'm-, I'm open for anything happening. I think this will be a-, a very interesting and fun game tonight. Yeah, I mean, we see things the same way. I- I- they're very unpredictable. And, uh, and people are asking me, and I'm going on shows, and I'm like, get your coin out and flip it. Maybe Nobody wants to be transparent with betting these games. But for me, I, I honestly don't know. I mean, that's how these are going. And, and Tariq Skubal, when he pitches, I know that game is going to be really good for Detroit. Uh, he's not going to pitch the next two days. They already have a win. So they're loving life. Houston's another huge favorite today with Hunter Brown on the mound. Uh, Detroit, as A.J. Hinch said, does really not have another starting pitcher here. Uh the Tigers, Matt, extremely dangerous if they get past this round because they can throw Scooble three times in a six or seven game series. Do you think that they can get another one in Houston with this patchwork pitching that they have? It's going to be tough. And, yeah, that's why yesterday was obviously so important. And and I think if you are a Tigers fan watching the end of that game, I just you'd have been on pins and needles. I, there's few sports that can do it to you, like playoff baseball. And given that situation especially, I, I – I, I felt for them, but then they got the win. So, you know, they got to celebrate, and that was great. But it's going to be extremely difficult today without question. Uh, you know, the Astros just seem to be one of these teams, too, that that has a way, and, and people can insert their own joke there about what that way is to find wins in the postseason sometimes. But, but this is the game that I'm most looking forward to today. I think, like I, like we've said, I think they're all going to be good. But I think it's, it's just extremely tough when you're taxing your pitching staff as much as they figure to do today on top of, you know, the fact that they had to tax it a little bit yesterday. Uh, Not that any of those guys besides Scooble aren't going to be available, but it's just going to make the whole road tougher, whether, uh, you know, it's 
a tough game today and oh they lost a tough one but you know we get to come out again tomorrow it's just going to make everything tougher so that that'll be a very interesting and fun game it's going to be a lot of intensity in that one yeah royals couldn't score a run yesterday they lost two or orioles couldn't score a run they lost to the royals cole reagan's did his job for six innings the one thing i didn't anticipate was baltimore getting completely shut down uh, but they did Uh, they'll go at it today with the orioles being a big favorite again And then the final game of the night, um, Mets, well, not the final game. Final game of the night is actually land in San Diego. But another game today, of course, the Mets can close out the Brewers with the line basically being about even. Brewers minus 116 on the money line against the Mets. Do you think, uh, Matt, that either team closes out their series tonight? You think the Mets close out the Brewers or the Royals close out the Orioles? Yeah, I think the Mets have a better chance of closing out tonight, but I think they're going to be two good games. The one thing I'll say is I do think runs are going to once again be at a premium in most of these games. Obviously, we saw one game with some runs uh, yesterday. I would imagine that one tightens up a little bit too. So uh, I'm not a big on uh, over betting today, even though we're seeing some uh, non-aces go and maybe getting, getting into some uglier pitching. All right, Matt, great to catch up with you. We'll talk again next week. I appreciate it. Anyone that's been to a sporting event, the atmosphere before a game, I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do, we can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the game start, so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing, and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal, and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. Your gut says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on Sports Grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports screen. After a very promising start to this season, could it be already done for KC's wide receiver, Rasheed Rice, attempting to make a tackle after Patrick Mahomes threw an interception? We're used to teams saying, we don't know, MRI, MRI, MRI. Here, Andy Reid's being a little more honest. He's leaving hope alive. But I think they already know, which is really, really too bad. The early line, only on Sports Grid. All right, welcome back to Newswire. Some very big news in the world of broadcasting and how you stream Major League Baseball. There's a bankruptcy hearing going on right now, and several outlets are reporting that Diamond Sports, which is the apparent company that is airing under the header of Bally Sports uh, for all of your RSNs, regional sports networks, will no longer uh, carry any Major League Baseball games (laughs) that they are under contract with. They're dropping them all except for the Atlanta Braves. So apparently each and every one of these RSNs that you watch your baseball games on are going to either have to renegotiate with Diamond or Bally Sports or start their own programming. Huge news in the world of broadcasting. All right, let's get into the Sports Grid sound off. (laughs) 
showdown Saturday has a little bit of a different look. One of the big games this week coming up, of course, the Nebraska Corn Huskers taking on Greg Schiano's Rutgers Scarlet Knights. Rutgers, big game on Saturday? When was the last time we said that? It's been a long time. Ben Stevens has a preview. I am not kidding. When I say the game of the week in week six of the 2024 college football season is in Lincoln, Nebraska, and it's Nebraska and Rutgers. The Huskers, a six and a half point home favorite with a total of 41 and a hook against the undefeated Rutgers Scarlet Knights. It's the first time since 2012 Rutgers has started a year a perfect 4 and 0 oh, and not only 4 and 0, oh, but Rutgers has covered in all three games against FBS competition. Nebraska favored in all five, both 4 and 1 straight up and against the number. In every win, the Corn Huskers have covered the number so far this season and in every win, the total has stayed under for Nebraska. We've got Big Ten title implications. We've got college football playoff implications in Lincoln, Nebraska on Saturday afternoon. It's the game of the week for week six of this CFB season. Craig, yeah, it back is. to you. Thanks very much, Ben. It is a huge game being played in Lincoln. And to think that right now Rutgers is involved in it getting six and a half points, is that the way to go? Well, Greg Schiano made a very interesting comment at his media session yesterday. And look, there's a lot of conferences out there in college football. Some think some are better than others. I mean, the SEC generally is producing the champion uh, each and every year or close to it. If it's not them, it's maybe Michigan or Ohio State. Greg Schiano, a big fan of his conference. Take a listen. Look, the Big Ten is the most challenging league in the country, and it requires you to get better every week. If you don't, you'll get left in the dust. So really, my main focus is just getting our team as improved as we can by Saturday. Will it be enough? I don't know, but I can't control that. What I can control is my staff and I challenging and presenting opportunities for them to improve, and hopefully they take advantage of those opportunities because that's what you know, that's what being in it together is all about. We have a job. They have a job. Together, we both do our jobs. It's going to be an improved product on Saturday. You need to improve every week. And I don't mean like smidges. You need to make big improvement every week. Otherwise, you get into the, the, you know, the middle and the back of the season. You're just not good enough to win because everybody else in this league, it's it's really well-coached league. I was talking to a guy today. He said, man, there's no rest in that league, right? Every team is well-coached. Every team's talented. I said, yeah. That's why I love it. That's why that's why we wanted to be in the Big Ten. It's where we belong. And, you know, I've said it before. It's that perfect intersection of elite football and elite academics. Rutgers undefeated going into this week, by the way, getting six and a half points. Matt Rule's done a nice job at, Sabra at Nebraska, also winning a lot of games since he has come over, but obviously knows the challenge that is ahead this week, too. Because we're winning a few games now, people are going to do different things against us. And I've got to get to the game. I've got to recognize what's happening in this game. It's not all this emotion beating our chest. Da, 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 da. It's like getting to the game and being like, what are they doing? Oh, oh, hey, this is a cover two game. Hey, this is a this game. Hey, this is a that game. And then them seeing the preparation, you know, um, you know, the things that we're working on and showing up. Like Barrett leaving trip. I, I said this on the thing, you know, we had, he had the same play in practice that wasn't very good. We showed it to the whole team. He got in the game, and he, he absolutely took out two guys. Like you guys you guys said, I hadn't seen that yet. So, hey, practice matters, you know, practice matters. And the guy that he hit in practice was Marquise Buford, who's, you know, two ACLs, bad shoulder, bad hip, bad neck, plays in every play. But yet, yet he's out there in, in his black, jerk, black shirt um, competing on a Tuesday because that's what we do here. Saturday will be action-packed here on Sports Grid. Fantasy sports today in the morning, and then all of our college football programming throughout the day exclusively here on the network. We'll take a quick time out here on Newswire. We come back next. Sam McQuillan joins us from Legal Sports Report. Don't go away. Anyone that's been to a sporting event, the atmosphere before a game, I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you, when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do, we can zone in 
on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the games start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. Your gut says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. After a very promising start to this season, could it be already done for KC's wide receiver, Rasheed Rice, attempting to make a tackle after Patrick Mahomes threw an interception? We're used to teams saying, we don't know, MRI, MRI, MRI. Here, Andy Reid's being a little more honest. He's leaving hope alive, but I think they already know, which is really, really too bad. The early line, only on Sports Grid. Welcome back to Newswire. Glad we have Sam McQuillan from Legal Sports Report here on the show because we're going to go over the craziest story of the week here on the program, which involves uh, it's a very complicated story. We'll dive into it. We'll also get into Nebraska, excuse me, DraftKings and Nevada as far as sports betting goes. But Sam, all right, so here we go here. Uh, we knew about this story. I believe it was uh, earlier this year, last year, there was an employee of the Jacksonville Jaguars who was uh, you know, it appears to be addicted to gambling, stealing a lot of money, allegedly, from the Jacksonville Jaguars, uh, had a sentencing involved, reparations involved, where he basically was just taking funds from the Jags, who make a fortune, and using it to bet on sports. And now, the same employee is suing the sports book, essentially, correct me if I'm wrong, for saying, you guys should have stopped me from betting. Tell me where I'm wrong here about this and how in the world this is legitimate. Yeah, Craig, it, it really is a crazy story um, that we heard from first last year and doesn't seem to be going away. It's actually even more nuanced than that, though, because this is all around daily fantasy sports, not technically sports betting. And we'll get into that a little bit later, how that kind of creates um, an even more confusing case and um, adds even more ambiguity about who is right and who is wrong here. But you have Amit Patel, the former Jacksonville Jaguars employee who pled guilty last year to stealing more than $22 million from the team and then using that money to fund his daily fantasy sports play and also a lavish lifestyle, which included private jets and golf memorabilia from eBay. He's now suing FanDuel, saying that they purposely ignored signs of problem gambling and uh, allegedly coerced him to spending more and more to the point where he would have to hit rock bottom and accusing the company of ignoring anti-money laundering protocols, essentially trying to get him to do this and pushing him to this place. Uh, he's currently serving six and a half years in federal prison in South Carolina uh, for admitting to embezzling all that money. He also could, oh, I think this is important to note, $88 million uh, to the Jaguars, depending on the outcome of another civil case, he was already ordered to pay about $20 million, which he probably does not have. And the Jaguars are also suing him in Southern Florida uh, for that extra $60 million in change. He's seeking $250 million here from FanDuel, filed this lawsuit in the Southern District of New York on Tuesday, um, alleging that FanDuel used things like VIP perks, a million dollars in credits to keep playing daily fantasy sports, trips to the Super Bowl to all keep him hooked. It also names a former FanDuel VIP host who actually now works at Fanatics. He says this guy targeted him 
and allegedly mm-hmm. exasperated, exacerbated his addiction uh, to the point where he would be texting him 100 times per day off of FanDuel's platform, allegedly even acknowledging that he was breaking anti-money laundering protocols. So I think the really important thing here to note is the bulk of this activity was all daily fantasy sports, uh, which in Florida, that was the only option that you had at the time. This was before Hard Rock launched. FanDuel doesn't right. offer sports betting in Florida, so their pl- that wouldn't have been able to happen anyway. And while DFS has a lot of similarities uh, to sports betting and in some cases outright elements that mirror gambling, legally it's treated very differently and very differently depending on the state. We have states' rights to thank for that and the Unlawful Internet Gambling Act of 2006, which created this whole kind of mess of is it fantasy sports, is it gambling? So he's saying that FanDuel allowed this to continue and only notify the Jaguars once he owed all this money. Um, but according to NFL rules, you it, you can only really notify someone of something happening once they're placing a sports bet because working as an employee for a uh, NFL organization and betting on sports is illegal. Daily fantasy sports, not technically sports betting. It's treated a little differently. So what I've heard from people close to the situation is once he actually tried to place a sports bet in a state that had sports betting on FanDuel's platform, that was flagged to the team, which then triggered this investigation. And then fast forward months later, he's in jail. He owes millions of dollars. This whole thing has kind of unfolded. So to me, this kind of seems like a a big swing from Patel and his lawyers to try to recoup some of that money that he allegedly owes. Um, They've talked about his gambling addiction in the past, sort of saying that, you know, we acknowledge that he did a wrong thing here, but also he suffers from this addiction. So um, right. And I would expect FanDuel to fight this uh, as hard as they can, especially considering that probably in their minds, they feel like they did the right thing and flagged this to the team uh, under the rules. It's much, much harder to track people who are playing fantasy sports. Uh, but this case is, you know, one that won't go away. I'm sure um, this is not the last we hear on this lawsuit and the other lawsuits that are pending. Yeah, and, and the other thing, Sam, is that this is a precedent-setting case as well, because this basically, if it was to go in the way of this individual would set the table for anybody who's addicted to sports gambling going after a sports book or a DFS operator saying you should have stopped me. So I certainly am going to keep my eye on this and see if that opens up that Pandora's box. Anyway, uh, DraftKings, we've got news on them. Uh, Social media content, which is now so prevalent and everybody's doing social media posts. Everybody's giving out picks online. DraftKings, though, got pinched for $200,000. What happened here? Yeah, DraftKings was hit with an SEC violation where they have to pay the 200K. Um, It actually stems from their CEO, Jason Robbins, posting on social media about the company's strong growth a week before earnings. Uh, The company came out, did not admit or deny any of the findings, but they actually agreed to pay the fine. Um, Basically, the regulation that was violated here was fair disclosure, according to the the SEC. Robbins uh, posted on social media talking about massive potential for growth in new markets, states that DraftKings launched in either 2018 or 2019 with sports betting, um, which ended up being a key component of the earnings call, which was held seven days later. He talked about revenue growing 80% in those states. And it's really become a big focal point for the company talking about how we're going to be profitable and continue to get money, even without new state launches. The problem here, according to the SEC, is that he, quote unquote, selectively disclosed info to investors it sort of has to be disclosing everyone, uh, info to everyone at the same time, saying he should have waited until earnings to disclose this. Now, social media can be used to make material public, um, but it has to be on an account that is flagged that will be sharing the information. At least that's according to the reporting from my colleague, Matthew Waters, who did a great job covering uh, this for us at Legal Sports Support. So um, neither of Robin's uh, Twitter accounts or X um, or LinkedIn accounts had been identified as these accounts where people could receive updates about sensitive stock information. So essentially it looks like he jumped the gun here and they got hit with a $200,000 fine because of it. Not a huge deal in the grand scheme of things, um, but definitely something that the company will not want to keep repeating. All right. Finally, uh, Sam, we've got a couple of minutes left. Let's get an update on uh, Nevada. I know there's some financial numbers in their average hold numbers. Uh, seems to be always a successful run for Nevada, What, no matter what time of the year it is, especially with football season in this quarter beginning. Yeah, Nevada is always a good benchmark for how Las Vegas-based sportsbooks are doing. We saw August, uh, they actually grew revenue and handle by a lot, despite a year where revenue and handle has been down. 
pretty much overall, it was the only month with, it was only the third month this year with year over year growth, which should set them up pretty well as we enter football season, postseason baseball, the NBA. They had about $455 million bet during the month, despite a below average hold rate of only five and a half percent. Everywhere else in the country, hold rates are about 9.7 percent. Uh, Nevada has a lot of the money bet in person, which kind of changes uh, the framework of how that all comes in. I think baseball really helped uh, with the postseason push there with the wild card races in the AL and the NL coming down to the wire. Always so amazed when you have 182 games that uh, can come down to the wire, but it's really good for sports books, um, obviously, as we see in Nevada. And like you alluded to, Craig, I would expect as the football season numbers roll in from September and then into October, we're only going to see this go up and up, um, especially with college football heating up as well. So um, good sign for the sports books, and I'd expect it to be their second straight month of growth once September comes in. All right, awesome stuff. As always, Sam, we'll keep an eye on that key story with FanDuel and the ex-employee of the Jaguars. Thanks again for coming on Newswire. Yep, thank you, Craig. All right, well, we just got some breaking news about the regional sports networks called Bally Sports under the umbrella of Diamond Sports. Looks like you'll be watching Major League Baseball either with them or somewhere else next season. Simon Applebaum and I will discuss that next. Anyone that's been to a sporting event, the atmosphere before a game, I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do, we can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the game start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. Your gut says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on Sports Grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports screen. After a very promising start to this season, could it be already done for KC's wide receiver, Rasheed Rice, attempting to make a tackle after Patrick Mahomes threw an interception? We're used to teams saying, we don't know, MRI, MRI, MRI. Here, Andy Reid's being a little more honest. He's leaving hope alive. But I think they already know, which is really, really too bad. The Early Line, only on SportsGrid. We have good timing on the show today. We have Simon Applebaum, who covers sports media and uh, some sports you know, gambling with media as well. And Simon is with us to talk about this very latest story on Major League Baseball, which essentially looks like they no longer have a partner in Valley Sports. Simon, thanks for coming on the show here. And, you know, certainly the writing was on the wall. Uh, let, let's just keep it real here. Diamond Sports paid way too much money. They didn't really read the tea leaves on owning these Major League Baseball contracts. Over the last couple of years, we've seen them drop several of them, keep some of them. They're in bankruptcy court as we speak right now. We're getting reports that essentially are saying that these deals with all of the teams in Major League Baseball are over, are done, except for the Atlanta Braves. 
So Valley will continue to broadcast those games under Diamond Sports. And the question becomes, Simon, moving forward, what happens to the rest? Well, it's all going to depend, Craig, on the mindset of these 11 teams that are uh, featured on this uh, contract, including uh, the Texas Rangers, who uh, have their games on Valley Sports Southwest. And it looks like the Texas Rangers may have gotten some wind that this was going to happen because uh, according to a report that came out this morning in a number of places, they are looking at doing their own regional sports thing. Now, it's probably not going to be on cable. It's probably going to be like some of the other teams that we've talked about in hockey and in basketball on this program last week and other places. You have the possibility of smart TV set or smart TV device distribution, uh, using broadcast stations for some of the games, maybe multicast uh, signals. That means a digital signal of a television station to carry the majority of their games, at least home games. So I have a hunch that uh, a lot of these teams are going to be, like the Texas Rangers, uh, doing a lot of huddling over the next couple of days, if not weeks, to try to see what can we do to get ourselves um, exposure in smart TV sets, in smart TV devices, uh, on broadcast stations, in multicast, and maybe even uh, some national games uh, on a, a, multi a mega content service like Peacock or uh or uh, Prime Video, or even Netflix. Don't forget, Netflix is now in the live sports event business. And what would be nice, for example, for a Netflix or a Prime Video would be to take on, let's say, a top matchup in Major League Baseball involving uh, two of these 11 teams. So uh, the, uh, the situation is wide open, and a lot's going to depend on whether these teams are uh, going to take uh, diamonds uh, that pass. Valley uh, demand of you either uh, renegotiate a new contract that works us better, or you're out. Yeah, no, it's it's fascinating, too, because Major League Baseball has been sitting back and waiting to gobble up all of these contracts and uh, make them, you know, their own and to just create their own, like, super broadcast network, renegotiate, try to get Yes involved, Nesson, Marquee, so, they, so Major League Baseball could own all the broadcasts with no blackouts. I think that that is still going to happen, Simon, in the future, by the way. I don't know if it's this year, next year, five years. I think it's going to happen. Uh, but for right now, it, it feels like, at the very least, according to this bankruptcy hearing, Major League Baseball had no idea, at least that's what they're saying, that this was going to be discussed in the bankruptcy court today. Okay, uh, let's get to Absolutely, this new... Absolutely, Craig. Uh, oh, Craig, Craig yeah. before you go, mm -hmm. one other thing. Uh, we should point out that when it comes to Chicago, uh, you have a very interesting situation there because NBC Sports Chicago uh, was uh, ended last year, last month, excuse me, and Chicago Sports Network, which is carrying the, the uh, White Sox games, among other Chicago major sports teams, uh, it just started yesterday. By the way, when it comes to uh, Chicago Sports Network, DirecTV is carrying them. Some cable operators in the area carrying them. Gray Media, the uh, TV sports owner, on some of their stations, they're going to be running uh, some of their games, some of their, uh, uh, some of their programming. Uh, what we don't know yet is whether Comcast or some of the other major cable operators in the area are going to take that service. Don't forget also the Chicago Cubs have Marquee Sports Network, and as far as we know, that contract still goes forward. Okay, great. I mean, really updated stuff here to the minute on our show here on Newswire. Okay, let's talk about this new streaming service. Feels like we do this every week, right, Simon? Free Live Sports. It's a, a streaming network, 60 plus channels, up to 100 by the end of the month. Sports Grid is on there too, so that's cool. We're free everywhere on all these different streaming services. Tell us more about what you know. Well, it started on Monday. Uh, disclosure, I know one of the people involved, Kathy Rassenberger, she is a major consultant to emerging cable services, emerging television networks. So she's partnered on this. And what it is, is it is a multi-channel bundle presenting the widest world of sports possible in terms of networks. Uh, like you mentioned, Sports Grid, this very service is on there. There's also services devoted to specific sports from Cornhole to Padel. That's the new... Uh, big thing in paddle sports. Um, and there's another 30 services that are going to go on beyond, beyond the end of the month. Also, they're talking to some of the major leagues who have individual networks like MLB Network, NHL Network, and so forth, also emerging sports leagues to see if they want to be part of this. Uh, again, it's a free service. It's ad-supported. They have now uh, gotten on Vizio Smart TV sets, also on Amazon Fire TV. They're also on Roku. They expect to get more Smart TV set device deals uh, before the end of the month, if not for the end of the year. Uh, so this is definitely a service to watch. They're not the only ones, by the way, starting a bundle. Another company called H2O, the streaming network, also has a nine sports bundle, some of the more unique sports like Cornhole and Padel and Handball. That just started a few months ago. By the way, uh, the head of that network will be on a special edition of Tomorrow Be Televised tomorrow afternoon at 3 o'clock. Awesome. We'll check it out on Blog Talk Radio and wherever you listen to podcasts. Let's end with Charles Barkley's new venture, 
appropriately titled Round Mound Redi uh, Media. For those of you unfamiliar, Charles Barkley, once upon a time, was nicknamed the Round Mound of Rebound. Uh, wh what is Barkley doing here, getting into media? Well, he is the latest sports current or former superstar that has seen the light and said, hey, I want to become a TV mogul. And that's what he's doing with this venture. He's got funding from Redbird Capital, the uh, part that deals with media headed by the former head of CNN and uh, NBC, Jeff Zucker. He's got uh, another company called Everwonder Media involved. And he wants to do it all. He wants to do sports programming scripted. He wants to do sports unscripted. He wants to do live programming. And when it comes to the sports-oriented content, TNT owned by Warner Bros. Discovery, is going to get first dibs on checking out that product and maybe running it somewhere, whether it's TNT, TBS, True TV, etc. So this is uh, something that more and more sports superstars, either uh, while they're still playing or while they're uh, about to retire, they see it as their new uh, calling card in terms of making a big splash in television. And uh, certainly Barkley has the expertise, and now he's got the financial backing to make it happen. All right. Excellent stuff as always, Simon. Thanks for coming on Newswire. We'll catch up with you again next week. You got it, Craig. Take care. All right. Simon Applebaum podcast tomorrow will be televised. Check it out tomorrow on Blog Talk Radio when it drops live. We'll be right back with some last licks. We'll get into a little Detroit Lions talk. Also, an owner in Major League Baseball taking a shot at one of his players. We'll have that and more next. Anyone that's been to a sporting event, the atmosphere before a game, I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you, when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do, we can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the game start, so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing, and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal, and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. Your gut says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on Sports Grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports screen. After a very promising start to this season, could it be already done for KC's wide receiver, Rasheed Rice, attempting to make a tackle after Patrick Mahomes threw an interception? We're used to teams saying, we don't know, MRI, MRI, MRI. Here, Andy Reid's being a little more honest. He's leaving hope alive. But I think they already know, which is really, really too bad. The early line, only on Sports Grid. Welcome back to Newswire here on Sports Grid. You may have remembered on Tuesday when we said that the Lions gave out their game balls and Jared Goff did not get one of them. We have an update on that. Uh, also, an owner in Major League Baseball taking a potential shot at a player on his team. Interesting. Uh, and also, the Yankees doing the right thing. Time now for some last licks. All right, well, Jared Goff had one of the best games of his career on Monday night. No, he didn't throw for 600 yards or 500 and five touchdowns or anything like that. He just was perfect. 
And how often could you say that in the National Football League? Goff was 18 for 18 passing. And Dan Campbell was asked about it after the game. And Campbell said that he didn't know that Goff was 18 for 18 or else he would have given him a game ball. And he did. Well, guess what? He made it right yesterday. Jared Goff got his game ball for having that game. Perfect passing. And also caught a touchdown pass. I think he probably should have got one anyway for catching that touchdown pass from Amara Ross St. Brown. What a story this really has become. And what a fascinating trade in the history of the NFL that sent Goff to Detroit, Stafford to the Rams to win a Super Bowl. And maybe Goff is in line to win a Super Bowl himself with Detroit this season. But Dan Campbell always doing the right thing, as it would appear. Again, a candidate for Coach of the Year in the National Football League once again. Jared Goff finally got his game ball. Meanwhile, no game ball for the owner of the Arizona Diamondbacks. Very bizarre interview on a local radio show that uh, Ken uh, Kendrick, the owner of the Diamondbacks, after they did not make the postseason, was asked sort of what went wrong. And as part of the interview process, Kendrick made a point to mention the signing of left-handed pitcher Jordan Montgomery was one of the issues that they had this past season. Montgomery had a, a really tough year, to say the least. And Kendrick said that was a big mistake by putting himself into the way of his uh, executives by saying, hey, this guy is still out, essentially. This guy is still out there. Maybe we should sign him. So they gave Montgomery a two-year deal, a one-year with a player option. And Montgomery could make over $20 million if he decides to pick up the player option next year. But why would he? After hearing that the owner doesn't really uh, appreciate him or like him, I guess the question becomes for Montgomery is does he think that he can get a multi-year worth more than 20 or so million dollars next year. And if so, I would think that he would be gone. Why in the world would he want to pay a uh, play for a team and an owner that takes a shot at him on a local radio station? Now, again, he was just telling the truth. I mean, he was being honest. He was saying, it's my fault. I shouldn't have done this. I'm the owner. Look at me. But at the same time as a player, I think you have to feel a little bit offended by that. Although I don't know how offended I would be. I think I would just take my $20 million for next season. Yeah, that's probably what I would do. All right, good job by the New York Yankees as they get ready to play this weekend in the first round of their American League Division Series. The Yankees and the Yankees Foundation made a $1 million donation to support the American Red Cross reliefs for related to Hurricane Helene. By the way, if you have not been paying attention to this, over 150 people have died from this. This has been a horrible storm. Uh, Yankees Foundation in Tampa also made a $250,000 donation to the American Red Cross. So good job by the Yankees there. This hurricane uh, ravaged not just Florida, but also uh, North Carolina, the mountains there, and a lot of the south in uh, Atlanta, Alabama, and Georgia. And you know, certainly hurricane season uh, can't end soon enough. It ends in about a month from now. All right, that'll do it for the show today. Let me give you the rest of the programming here on our network. Coming up, of course, we have the early line, and then that is followed by Pharrell Coast to Coast at 3 o'clock Eastern, so make sure you tune in for that. We got game time decisions, and there will be a lot of decisions to be made on the baseball postseason, which begins at 2.30. So there's going to be live action throughout the day there and also on in-game live game day and Sports Rage tonight, including some WNBA playoff action. By the way, the NHL preseason is underway, I saw. And the NBA preseason is getting ready to get underway as well. So there's going to be plenty uh, of different options to look at as well. Uh, also, thanks to all of our guest contributors on the show today. Simon Applebaum of the podcast tomorrow will be televised. Check out his podcast tomorrow, as he said, the very latest on streaming rights going on around the country. Also, Sam McQuillan from Legal Sports Report. And also, of course, thanks to all of our guest contributors from Sporting News today. Matt Litovsky was on the program as well. Thanks to our director, Luke, and our producer, Frank. I'm Craig Bish. See you tomorrow morning, 11 a.m. Eastern. I have a feeling we'll be back talking some college and pro football here on the show. So make sure you tune in same time, same place, same network, same programming exclusively here on SportsGrid and streaming over at SportsGrid.com. Hope you enjoy the rest of your Wednesday. I'll see you tomorrow.